I was a member of the Special Engineer Detachment, of two Special Engi Engineer Detachments. I worked at the University of Chicago <clears throat> at the Metallurgical Laboratory, and I also worked at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in the plant uh, conceived and uh, designed by Philip Abelson, who was probably here today. And uh, uh, I... Uh, lived in the barracks area when I was at Oak Ridge, and I lived in an apartment with three other soldiers when I was in Chicago. And uh, I, I brought something away from uh, the project that many people did not have uh, the opportunity to do, I think. We worked very hard when I, I went to Oak Ridge first, when I was immediately transferred to Chicago. When I returned to Oak Ridge because they were setting up uh, Abelson's plant down there, that was such a high priority thing that we worked on that project uh, seven days a week. At the end of the week, we would shift to a different uh, uh, period of the day that we would work, a different shift work another seven days, then we'd change to the third shift to work seven days. At the end of that period, we got one day off. So we worked very hard. But when I was in Chicago, I met the woman who became my wife <laughs> and the mother of my four children. And uh, I was very happy to have come away with that. Uh, when I w went to Chicago, at Chicago, I worked in West Stands where Fermi had uh, had built the, uh, had conducted the first uh, chain reaction, built the first pile. We call them nuclear reactors now. And uh, next door to the, uh, the squash courts where he built the pile, there were four four-wall handball courts. In those four four-wall handball courts, there had been constructed and in operation by the time I got there, a uh, pilot plant that was used uh, to assist in the design and solution of problems that were experienced at the large plant at Hanford, Washington for the production of plutonium. This pilot plant was, to, was built to uh, study, uh, well, to get small samples of uh, plutonium from, to separate them from fission products and, uh, and solve problems that they were having at the big plant in Hanford. Uh, that plant uh, was run by the uh, the DuPont Corporation. All of the people there were uh, were DuPont engineers, except toward the end, when I uh, left unexpectedly. I didn't know I was going to leave. Uh, I began to notice that we were getting a lot of young PhDs, who I imagine were not employees of of uh, DuPont, but were instead employees of the University of Chicago. But that I worked there for about nine months, and I also worked at Oak Ridge for about nine months. I uh, went home for Christmas time from uh, Chicago. When I came back, my three roommates were gone, uh, and uh, all the other soldiers were gone. It turns out that they were all, in the meantime, while I was on leave, sh sent to Oak Ridge, Tennessee, to uh, start up a new plant, the thermal diffusion plant the concept of which was uh, originated with Philip Abelson from the Naval Research Laboratory. And that was a, a tough job getting that thing started up, and, uh, and we, did, uh, we did work very, very hard down there. At the end of, uh, well then, while I was there, living in the barracks area, in fact, uh, VJ Day, uh, VE Day occurred. And, uh, I had always wanted to go to officer candidate school, so I went. I applied to go to officer candidate school from there, and uh, I was an engineer soldier. The board was all engineer officers. Uh, they asked me where I would like to go, and I had been as an ordnance soldier at Aberdeen Proving Ground, and I felt my chances of success would be much better if I returned to Aberdeen. So I said, yes, I would like to go to the ordnance officer candidate school at Aberdeen Proving Ground. So they wrote away for it for a quote of one for me to go to Ordnance OCS. And in a very quick time, they got an answer, which was yes. And I went up there. That's how I left the project. <laughs> While I was in Ordnance OCS, VJ occurred, VJ Day occurred. And uh, 
we're so busy in OCS, it wasn't until the following weekend that I knew that the bomb had been dropped. And of course, the product from the, the first, uh, the bomb in Hiroshima used the product of our plant uh, with the product of other capabilities, other plants at, at Oak Ridge, so that uh, what I had done at, uh, at uh, the company was called the Furcleave, Ferguson Construction Company of Cleveland. The code name for the project was Furcleave. Uh, what I did at the Furcleave plant resulted in uh, some product that actually got into that first bomb. It's a terrible, terrible weapon, and uh, uh, I think the, uh, what's required is to take all steps necessary never to have to use it again under any circumstances, even for these smaller munitions which the Army now has to use in the battlefield. I think that's a catastrophe to, to go along in that direction. Uh, by the way, uh, there was a question this morning about uh, that I thought the correct answer to was uh, the reason for the success of the project was in fact General Groves. He was a tremendously dynamic individual. I met him on one occasion when he came to uh, Oak Ridge too, for morale purposes. But as busy as he was, he was, he was a, an immaculate. I, he, there was not a, a single speck of dust on his uniform, on his shoes. Everything was in place. He was a very, very impressive man. Uh, I was so impressed with him, as a matter of fact, that I went to, uh, to look up his grave in, uh, in um, Arlington Cemetery. And uh, I had to go back to the administrator of the cemetery three times to find it, because I thought being such a distinguished man, he, he'd have a sort of a prominent grave there. Well, it turns out after he was buried, a shrub began to grow in the vicinity of his stone. And uh, this shrub now completely dominates, so that unless you get bend down and look underneath it, you can't find the stone where, where the general is buried. Another interesting thing about that is that uh, not many people know that General Groves, as, a, as an engineer colonel in the Corps of Engineers, was the principal engineer uh, for the design and construction of the Pentagon building. And so now, as he rests in peace on this hill, he can overlook this tremendous job that he did locally in Washington or in Arlington. On a subsequent visit, back to Chicago after my children were born, uh, I want, my wife and I wanted to show them where we had lived. And uh, as you know, Stagg Field was the, was the football stadium at the University of Chicago. It was a very unusual stadium because of space limitations. The only place there were any seats were at the west end of the field. There were none along the sidelines. There was none at the far end of the field. They had built a field house over there. But at the west end, they had seats so the people could wa watch the football game over the goalposts. And that was West Ends, and that's where these uh, things related to the project were actually, actually built. But when, we back, when I brought my children back there them, to show them where we had been and where my wife had lived, I had lived some distance away, there was nothing there. It was just a great big open field, beautiful green uh, lawn with a, a little marker about the size of that desk saying that the first <laughs> chain reaction in the world took place on, on this site, but nothing else to be, be any reminder. And it turns out that the university actually owned all of those buildings, the, those private homes around there, and the one that my wife lived in, for example. That whole area of private homes, block after block, had also been completely taken out, nothing but green grass. It was a very, very surprising thing to see. So you were